Hey guys, I had starting issues with my Mazda RX-8 after leaving it for four days without starting it. Out of the blue, I came out, tried to start it up, nothing. Granted, that was actually freezing type of weather. Um, I'm pretty sure I had nothing to do with it, but the car absolutely would not start. But guess what guys, I do get it started in this video. Please take a look at it. Perhaps this is actually going to help you start yours because if I would give up just a little bit too soon, my Mazda RX-8 would still not be started right now. But guess what? It is started. Currently, it's actually running outside. I'm letting it just kind of like work all those things out. And um, also, I already test drove it and it drives beautifully. It accelerates really good. Everything is doing well. Uh, as well as you could expect for a car that doesn't start and then all of a sudden now start it up. But anyways, guys, take a look at this video. Hopefully this is gonna help you and let me know if it does. Also, please subscribe to this channel and hit a bell notification. Hit a like in this video because I will be constantly making Mazda RX-8 related type of videos to help other Mazda RX-8 owners just by sharing my personal experience and um, hopefully my tips will save you hundreds if not thousands of dollars just like it does on my main channel where I have millions of views helping people out with Mercedes diesels. But anyways guys, enjoy the video. <laughs> my negative and the positive battery terminals i left this car pretty much sitting all day replaced the battery with the original battery that it had in it which was actually dead when i got it and i actually revived that battery if you want to know how please ask in the comments below and i'll make a video um let's try to start say, it here goes nothing Yeah, that won't sound too good. Interesting how it goes, guys. Hey, then. One day your car is starting just fine. The next day, this is what you're dealing with. I actually bought this car as a non-start at an auction for 1500 bucks. Thought I was getting a deal. Got this thing started. I was pretty happy with it. I already bought some upgrades for it. But I left it sitting for four days, and this is what I get. Let's try starting it again. guys does it sound to you like the engine is not rotating fast enough it's like the starter is not spinning fast enough possibly not because the starter is weak or not spinning things fast enough i think it's probably just the fact that maybe this battery was just sitting for a little bit and it got discharged so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna try to hook up my battery um jump back to it and see what kind of voltage and i'm getting just what i was saying guys uh the battery level is actually 18.8 volts so the battery that i have removed from here actually had a much better charge so yeah so basically guys here's what i'm gonna tell you okay um i've tried using this same jump pack to get my car started when i actually bought it i was unsuccessful uh, doing so not that it's a bad jump pack I just think it does not provide uh, enough of a kick to actually start things up so I do have another one that mechanics use you roll around and you give it like 200 amps of uh, engine start pretty much and I'm gonna try to use that tomorrow um, you guys will not be able to tell the difference but before I do that gonna hop that over give it a few more spins call it a day. all right guys let's give this a go spinning much faster from what I could say 
It's almost the background starting to catch a little bit. Very mild, just very mild. You know, last time in order to get it started, I really had to spin and spin and spin. I'm actually going to link that video up in the description below because it's on my other channel. It has got millions of views. And I decided to start this Mazda RX-8 channel because that other channel is mainly diesels. So let's try to do this again. Yeah, it's spinning much faster. You know, I could smell gas. Definitely smelling it. I'm not really sure where it's coming from. But I'm smelling either that or emissions. By the way, guys, I want to show you a little mod I did for the SSV. As you can see, I got this bungee cable uh, hooked up to that thing at the bottom. Uh, it basically makes the intake open up instead of waiting the SSV to open it up. Um, I'm just going to disconnect it for now. You know, um, try starting it without. Let's try this again. It's definitely very lively now. That jump back really does help. I think before I get started, it's gonna get you flooded. A lot of you guys are watching and you're like, you know, it's probably low compression and this is why it's not starting. And although you may be correct, because this does have 127,000 miles on it, a lot of us really don't want to hear that, especially if this is the only car that you have, because trying to look at a rebuild, it's kind of like, uh, you know, it's not for everybody. Obviously. Now we're probably going to get pretty much the same thing. Just want to spin it some more. Oh yeah, we're getting something. I don't know what some of you guys are thinking, probably going to get a dead starter. Come on, bro. Come on, come on. Come on. I don't even want to let the key, key, key go. Man, why did I let go? You see that, guys? That's persistence. You know, I'm going to let um, the starter just cool off for just a little bit and go from there. But I should have not let go of the key but I was already trying to rev it at the same time and had the key it did not feel natural with the car almost started up without me revving it um, here's what I'm kind of thinking okay why is this car starting right now and it wasn't starting before well the compression is probably pretty bad on it and um, because I'm trying to spin it spin it and stuff and spin it it's somewhat, um, some oil probably makes it in some places and kind of seals, sealing things up a little bit, just enough to let the compression build up. That's kind of like what it's doing. And it's trying to really start. This is why you've really got to keep the starter churning so that it could keep things lubricated and with the help of a starter, just really get things started. So let's do this again. It's weaker this time. No. Come on. Come on. I'm hitting the gas. You know, it just basically shut down on me as I'm doing it. This is why, actually, I did not let the key go. So possibly that's what happened last time. I was actually still holding the key on just to sort of quit. But as it was trying to start, it did help with me trying to rev it just a little bit. So let's keep going. What I'm doing now is I'm hitting the gas just a little bit. Every like, I don't know, like 10. Okay, I let go of the key. I got, the, I'm flooring it. I 
know what you guys are thinking. You're gonna hurt your engine trying to rev it uh, with it being on cold. But at this point, should I be even worried? It's, there's obviously lots of smoke that came out right now. Okay, let's apply my mod back. Guys, you can see it's smoking a lot right now. But the car will actually not smoke. This smoke will clear up. So this is pretty much, uh, it's been flooded with me spinning so much. So it needs to work this um, fuel out of it. So, battery is now showing 14. I'm still giving it a boost. I'll turn the boost off. Disconnect terminals let that go and here's my little oh it looks like a disconnector see this is this is the thing uh, SSV controls it's that second second solenoid it controls it. And the solenoid is actually over there. Um, it's actually currently disconnected, guys. There's, there's no SSV in there right now. Seriously, there is not. Um, so in order to open up the intake, this is what I'm doing. Uh, and I did test this with vacuum hose. Uh, it actually, that vacuum thing, it works for a while it opens things up and um, because the intake does open up that means there's no carbon build up which is good so let's go ahead and actually put a little bungee on it um, let's see I can't really see what I'm doing right there you see okay you see how I got that on there all right so all you gotta do Oh my god. Let's do this again. It got tangled up and it did not allow me to. Let's see if this opens opened up. Actually, it's like not even opened up. So I gotta get a much bigger tension. I, mean, I don't know what it would do at this point. It's gonna be this pipe. Let's see what's going on. Oh yeah, it's definitely opened up right now. So guys, I know you did not expect to get a little tip like this, and I don't know if you guys are uh, even interested in that, but you know, here it is, we're trying to share it with you. So, if your SSV failed, and you wondered if you could drive without it, perhaps you ordered one like I did, and it hasn't come in yet, which mine just did, actually. Um, that is the fix for it. By the way, all three solenoids, they are all identical. But before I actually get a chance to install it, I'm gonna go by my brother's shop and we're going to test this SSV because I got one from from eBay. Three of them at the same time for less than 20 bucks. So I wanna see if they're any good. So we're gonna, we're gonna test those. And by the way, got these on eBay for like, I don't know, four bucks. These battery terminals, they seem to be working good. So let's take a look if it's smoking. Approximately, 10 minutes has passed, maybe less. And as you can see, it's not smoking Let's already. Just enjoy it. Looks like it's running. It's got a pretty good idle. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourself. 
see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.